I'd like to introduce Sherry Rogers. Sherry studied fine arts and computer science in university and graduated with honors from the computer animation program at Sheridan College, Toronto. She traveled to Vancouver in 2004, working as a surfacing artist on animated shows that include Adam's Family, Angry Birds, Ghostbusters, Wonder Woman, and Smallfoot. A surfacing artist works closely with the art department to translate 2D conceptual artwork into 3D environments and backgrounds. And these elements have found their way into her painting style. After many years of digital painting on highly realistic 3D backgrounds for feature film, Sherry's traditional paintings combine graphic design principles and pop cultural themes. Her subjects range from her first person experience in graffiti covered landscape paintings to glitchy portraits that explore the impact of digital culture on our analog minds. So welcome, Sherry. Thank you. <laughs> so let's just dive right into it. Um, I was wondering if you could just give us sort of a big picture look at um, your art practice and um, just give us like a kind of basic understanding of what your approach to art making is. Yeah, well, like you said, I worked in film. I've been working in film for a long time and I think that pop culture has a lot of influence in how we see the world and um, so I started doing pop paintings that were based on like movies that I'd seen in the past or um, a lot of just color and things that I was seeing in the environment so they all have kind of a graphic design tone to them um, yeah just uh, things that I was really interested in in film started finding their way into my artwork you work as an animated, an animator, and you also paint a lot of pop cultural imagery. So tell me a little bit about like how that progressed for you as like, as you grew up, you know, from being a child to an adult and what got you there? Yeah, it, well, it's interesting because I grew up very rurally in Saskatchewan and had access to almost no media. Like it was a really big treat if we could drive two hours into Saskatoon and right. rent a VHS tape and then we had to send it back in the mail so it always seemed like <laughs> wow. a really big deal to be able to watch movies um, so I think that I became more immersed in pop culture through my 20s and realized there was this whole you know world of references that I didn't get or, and they were really important. So I started my education sort of when I started uh, film school. I got into it because I wanted to be an artist and I was always really encouraged uh, to paint, to draw. No one ever told me that I couldn't be an artist, but no one ever explained to me how, you know, to make a living doing that. Mm -hmm. And it was always kind of implied that I couldn't. And so, I uh, was determined to find a way to make money doing art. Do you think because you w were sort of deprived or not deprived, but you didn't have access to media that you like then needed to, 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 to get it? You know, it's like if we're, yeah. we, we're not, we're told we can't have it or it's difficult. Yeah. And you, you go and you search it out. Yeah. Well, and I approached it um, like its own education. Like I wanted to, Mm -hmm. you know, learn the whole history and like deep dive into genres and like really nerd out about it. So when I went to university, I went into computer sciences and art and it was all new then. Like Photoshop was like barely invented. <laughs> Makes me sound really old, but um, like our teacher was learning it just like one week ahead of us. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that there was a future there that I could be really excited about and find a way to sort of move forward with my education and be an artist. Tell me about your series of paintings that you completed during the pandemic and how did the physical and mental effects of the pandemic influence this creativity? Yeah, well, before the pandemic, I was painting a lot of landscapes and I kind of thought of it as like my personal experience out in the world. And it was like very subjective and um, yeah, as soon as the pandemic happened, all of a sudden it was like the world 
was taken away. And what I missed most was people. And I hadn't really explored painting people in portraits outside of like my pop art references. Mm -hmm. Um, I was, you know, stuck at home by myself and I didn't like a lot of my shows were canceled, but it kind of gave me the opportunity to think, you know, I have this time and if I can paint anything, then what do I want to paint? And at the time it was people, you know, I just missed people so Mm. much. And I feel like because it was such a, you know, stressful catastrophe, Um, I got really addicted to um, news and my phone, like I was on it all the time and Mm -hmm. suddenly that feeling of being distracted and not having any concentration became, you know, so apparent, it was so overwhelming. So I started painting these girls that (laughs) were wearing like a space bubble on their head and it was very glitchy because my own mind was so distracted. it felt like everything was just so crazy. I wanted to kind of have that um, disconnected feeling coming out in the paintings. Um, So I kind of like hit my stride with exploring that topic. And then um, I was approached by La Luz de Jesus Gallery in LA, who I'd Mm. shown with in February, my last trip on an airplane. Um, They invited me back for a show in August. Uh So that kind of gave me a goal, so I did a series of six paintings uh, with one model, Desi Desire. And yeah, really kind of refined that bubble bubble theme. Changing uh, gears to a different series, but can you tell me about your Art on Wheels series? Like what are what is the overarching theme of them and then how you kind of specifically, uh, you know, attack that theme? Yeah, well, it started with um, what I called my bicycle portraits. Mm-hmm. I got a bicycle and I was I learned how to ride my bike in the city for the first time. Mm. Um, and so all of a sudden I had access to all these parts of the city that I would never have walked down. And I could ride through back alleys or, you know, go to different neighborhoods really easily. And I started seeing all of this art that was, you know, just off the street, so much color. And I thought of it as kind of like social media in the streets because the images were always changing, like the same way that you'd scroll through in Instagram. You go through an alley and every time it would be hmm. different. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So I wanted to, I would put my bike in the middle of the painting and that was kind of a stand in for myself and then paint the changing background. So it was kind of like one artist's interpretation of all these artists that had Um, contributed to that wall or that background Mm -hmm. and then from there I kind of elaborated and I started painting uh, trucks and a lot of the street art that you see out there is painted by men because if I was you know out painting on a truck in the middle of the night I would feel you know a lot of danger uh, in doing that so with that series I wanted to imagine if I was out in the middle of the night spray painting on the side of a truck Mm -hmm. what would I paint and so I painted a lot of like florals and a tribute to Frida Kahlo. And it was kind of symbolic of, you know, the, um, the truck is like a blue collar symbol mm-hmm. uh, of labor and painting women on the side of the trucks was sort of the symbol of the work that women do, you know, in the environment and in the world. Mm-hmm. And uh, maybe we should have more of them on the sides of semis and trains a sherry okay so this is this is an incriminating question but have you ever done any um art that you've gone out and just done no no do you want to well i would find it really interesting to do that because i painted it like i painted on walls on small scale yeah um but yeah it would be really interesting for me to be out there and painting they seem very you know it's it's of uh, an urban landscape, but it's also very personal. So uh, I yeah. love, I love um, taking a look at them because you can just see more and more every time you look. What do you think of the quote by W. D. Griffith, the filmmaker? Um, or sometimes it's attributed to John Luc Godard. All you need to make a film is a girl and a gun. Uh, that that sounds to me like a person that doesn't have a lot of imagination. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, well, it kind of is indicative of, you know, 
how much they underestimated the complexity of women's lives mm -hmm. and um you know like women are people people have stories so you know you could just as easily say all you need to make a movie is a girl in a chessboard and you know, Netflix has proved that to be true. Yeah, so. I know. I was going to say to you, um, you know, it, it's very much about like, the, you know, what tells an interesting story is sex and violence. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're minimizing what, you know, the complexities of what women are to sex, right? But yeah. when I look at your series of work, um, which is called Strong Female Character strong female characters. It could easily be um, all you need to make a film is a girl and her friendships um, or a girl and yeah. a watermelon, a girl and yeah. an idea. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Tell me about the last skill you learned as a painter that kind of has changed the game for you as an artist. Um, well, I was trained in oil paints and then I used acrylics for years and acrylics were really great for that strong female character series because I painted them in a very blocky style. I kind of wanted it to look a little bit like JPEG compression. So it was like really solid kind of panels, brush strokey square uh, marks. Mm -hmm. um, but whenever I would try to do skin and want it to have that depth and smoothness, I know you can do that with acrylics, but I really struggled with it a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I started experimenting with oils again and it, it just comes out. It's so smooth, with just skin. makes it easy. So yeah. did you do that with your, your um, pandemic series? Yeah, with the bubbles. I yeah. uh, usually start with acrylic, like I block it all in. I mm -hmm. find oils are really hard on my body because I can't rest my hand on the panel. Mm -hmm. And so I block in all the colors with acrylic and then I go over it with a you know, layer or two of oil. Well, I always thought of oils too as like muted sepias and yellows, like very traditional, but there's some like pretty juicy oil paints out there and Kama has a line of neon oils and they're just, oh, they're so amazing. Like they, mm. they really uh, transmit the feeling of light very well. So yeah, you're not restricted in any media. So you work as a computer animator as well as an artist. And how does this job influence your painting and, and vice versa? Well, it's uh, been a really great education. You know, as an artist, it mm -hmm. taught me how to see light and about color space and what colors uh, go together. Um, they gave me a very critical eye um yeah and I also really quick when you say critical eye what do you mean well if i'm trying to make something realistic you know after years of um taking direction from art directors or trying to match live plates you know like it's taught me how to see in a really realistic style mm -hmm. to right. how to translate that into paint mm -hmm. um yeah so so that's how, that's how when you look at your, your, like, um, your landscape, urban landscapes and they look, yeah. so, the textures of them are so amazing and the detail yes. in them are so amazing. And this is, this is coming from probably doing the work that you do as an animator. Yeah, totally. I would work on backgrounds all day at work and then go home and then paint brick walls. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> like yeah. I just couldn't get enough of it for the past 10 or 12 years I've you know, kept an active practice and I've been really disciplined about always having something of my own on the go oh that's great um so yeah. what kind of programs do you use as an animator oh well as a texture artist I use um photoshop you know for the basics um mm -hmm. mari substance designer substance painter mm -hmm. um maya so what has been one of the most challenging art projects that you've done in your life and why was it challenging and what did you learn from that process? Um, I always feel like the hardest project is whatever 
my current project is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, as soon as yeah. it's over, I, I'm on to the next thing. I don't want to think about it anymore. And then there's new problems to solve. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And it, my style isn't, or subject matter isn't consistent. So I haven't developed like a trademark way of doing anything. So I always have um, mm -hmm. new problems and like a new approach that I have to get through. I find it like math, like it's like a new equation. Math and art. Um, there's a lot of similarities in that you do have to solve Definitely. problems. There's constant problems to solve. Sometimes um, different things that I want to say require different styles. Like sometimes I want it to be really simple and sometimes mm -hmm. I want it to be loosey goosey. So mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. you got to approach you know, what you want to say in its own kind of way. Yeah. Well, that's a really good answer to that question, I think. Um, well, let's break down one of your pieces. Which one do you want to talk about um, today? Oh, I thought we could talk about my red telephone piece. I called it, I just called to say I love you. Okay. Um, that's a song from Stevie Wonder, and it starts out, no New Year's Day to celebrate. Um, and it's all about all these different things that are being taken away. And every time that we would lose a holiday <laughs> through this pandemic, I would think of that song, like how sad it was that we weren't able to celebrate one thing after another. But, you know, I always missed talking to people on the phone and I never thought that that would ever come back. And, you know, for months I talked and talked and talked on the phone. So yeah, I wanted to, do that painting as kind of a tribute to you know the old-fashioned communication it's such a nice way to connect with people I yeah, hate texting so personal yeah yeah and then stylistically for that painting mm -hmm. I mean we kind of associate that glitchiness with digital art but um mm -hmm. I have really bad eyesight like I lost my eyesight when I was in about grade two and like, it's so bad, I wouldn't even be able to see the Zoom screen if, uh, if it wasn't for my glasses. And it, my lenses have a lot of curvature on them. And sometimes if I'm by a window and the light catches the lens in just such a way, it, I can see the prism of the light coming through the lens. And on some sides of objects, I can see a red halo. And on the other side, I can see a blue. And it's a way of seeing that I could never take a photo of, but because I have this ancient technology of analog glasses, I'm able to see the world in a, in a way that other people can't. So mm -hmm. it's cliche to say, but you know, sometimes the things that you think of as disability are the, also the things that make you see the world in a unique way. So with yeah. that painting, that effect is called chromatic aberration. And in film, because we're so used to seeing the world through a camera lens, sometimes in digital film, they'll add chromatic aberration because it looks more realistic to our eyes. Mm -hmm. And it, so I wanted to kind of recreate that analog effect uh, with those analog telephones. It was like culturally because we were all talking on the telephone. Mm -hmm. um, we were all thinking about the past because our future had changed so dramatically. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like the analog technology of lenses uh, is kind of underestimated, even though that's sort of like the way that we've seen the world um, mm -hmm. in media for so long. And now we're, you know, on TV and on media all the time. So mm -hmm. we've mm -hmm. kind of forgotten where that came from. So Sherry, what advice do you have for a younger artist or a creative person who's uh, just kind of starting out? Yeah, if someone asks or if someone told me that they wanted to be an artist, I would say take accounting. <laughs> I think, yeah, artists really underestimate how important it is to learn about taxes and having a business license and you know saving money the more money that you save the more artistic freedom you have mm -hmm. the more you're able to keep your costs down um the more you're able to explore mm -hmm. and uh, when i was a young artist i thought you know i'll think about money when i have some but you never have any if you don't learn about it and 
you know, artists um, are born with this intuition uh, for their skill. And so sometimes, you know, it, you don't realize that you have to come into other subjects with the intention of learning about it. And if you mm -hmm. wait for someone to teach you about it, you know, that person might never come along. You have to kind of like go out and find those resources. It, and it's like, it's very simple to learn. Uh, being an artist is really about being an entrepreneur. It's about being a yeah, business, definitely. A business mm -hmm. person. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, and, and actually in a lot of ways, there's so much fun to that. I mean, it's, it, yeah. it can be exhausting, but it's also like, there's a lot that's um, really like empowering about it. Do you have an art prompt for us? Uh, could you give us a cool creative assignment that gets us to think and be creative like you? Oh, okay. Um, I am going to give you the assignment to take an error that you would see on your computer or in a game or on your phone and turn it into a piece of art and make it beautiful. When you say an error, what are you talking about? So maybe something that's glitchy, something that you would say has gone wrong, something's crashed, you know, something's not working. Are you able to see that in a different way and mm -hmm. turn it into some kind of imagery? Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I really want people to see, even if it's a spontaneous error, mm -hmm. to see that um, as his own kind of art form. I mean, it's really changed the game having computers to make analog work. Um, how does it, how does it, like, what are the, the major ways that it's helped you? Um, well, it's helped me a lot, but it's also made me far more controlled. Like I would have a really hard time sitting down in front of a white canvas and just making something. I feel really dependent on working out what the image is going to look like on a computer before I ever start. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I've lost a little bit of um, spontaneity um, mm -hmm. in not being able to just wing it. Um, so I'm trying to be a little bit more loose, but it's really hard to let go of. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, you know, I can work out all those issues on my computer um, mm -hmm. without using up supplies. Um, yeah. You know, I can figure out what my style is going to look like. Like, there's a lot more room for inconsequential errors um, mm -hmm. before I start the actual painting. Like, there's more cost involved when you're using actual paint. So, yeah. what's amazing about um, digital culture now is that we can we can make mistakes beforehand or mm -hmm. kind of have but yeah I mean with anything you have to be really conscious about how it's using you and how you're using it. Sherry can you please tell us where we find you online? Oh yeah I'm at at Sherry Rogers on Instagram that's S-H-E-R-R-I R-O-G-E-R-S and at um, SherryRogers.com on the internet Yep. And you can find me in my studio just a couple steps down from where Justess is right now. <laughs> At the Arts Factory in Vancouver, right. British Columbia. Um, That's right. So, and do you have any shows coming up or, uh, yeah, can you tell us about anything that's coming up for you? Um, in 2021, I will be showing back at Gallery 1988 in LA some more movie-themed art. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and who knows what next year will bring. Uh, it's all up in the air right now, so... Well, thank you so much, Sherry. Thank you. Yeah, that was yeah this has been great.